I think that equating opposition to feminism with misogyny is the same as suggesting that the only reason to not be a communist is that you hate working people. I don't hate working people. I don't hate communists. I don't hate women and I don't hate feminists. I don't hate anybody. I keep my political discussions completely free from emotion because I think emotion has no place in a political discussion. The 15 impossible things to believe before breakfast constitute what I see as structural flaws in feminism. Structural flaws. They are just as impossible to believe today as they were when I wrote them down more than a decade ago. They will be just as impossible to believe a decade from now, or a century from now, or two centuries from now. As we saw in the discussion between Jeff Seiler and Barry Deutsch, the definition of misogyny has been expanded from hatred of women to include mistrust of women. But it seems to me that the mere fact of moving the goalposts on what a term means can only generate mistrust of the ones doing so. Advising men to be wary of such people and such political clevernesses strikes me as simple common sense, not misogyny. In the same way, I advise men to be wary of any political movement that enforces its will by making an example of people, as the feminists have endeavored with great success to make an example of me for the last 20 years. If you don't want us to do this to you, toe the feminist line is certainly effective, but it hardly constitutes an intellectually honest reaction to the 15 impossible things to believe before breakfast. I think I'm safe in saying that people who either assist in making an example of people, destroying human lives in the name of ideology, or who enable such people to do so by not speaking out against ideologues and in favor of political pluralism, always end up on the wrong side of human history. I don't think the comic book field is immune to that. Quite the contrary. The more time goes on and the more people choose not to sign the petition, the further, I'm sure, posterity will sorely judge those who made that choice. I think it's very unfortunate that that will be the case. But I've also come to accept that there's nothing I can do about that. Besides, personally, staying resolutely on the pluralism side of the fence, along with the 600-plus and counting signatories.